Hi, my name is Kevin Norum, and I'm a sales executive at Mattermark, and I want to show you how to use Mattermark to build a lead list of accounts that are more likely to convert for you. So, first thing you want to do in Mattermark is go to the All Companies view, which is accessed by going to Companies and then selecting All Companies. From here, you're going to be looking at the entire universe of companies in Mattermark, except for public companies. You probably want to include public companies in this, uh, depending on what type of uh, sales rep you are, I guess. And the way to do that is go up to Stage equals Exited and click on this blue X. Now we are looking at every single company that Mattermark is tracking, which as of this recording is about 1.4 million. You can see that right here. Generally, the first thing that you want to do, depending on how your sales organization is organized, is you want to start off by going to vertical or location and identifying the uh, area where you're focused in. So for this example, I'm going to pretend like I'm a sales rep in the Bay Area, and I'm going to go to location, and I'm going to type in Bay Area, and select Bay Area Metropolitan Region. So that's going to be my first cut to uh, start to drill down to the companies that matter to me. Before I go on, I want to explain a couple of scores that we have in Mattermark to help you surface interesting companies. We have the Mindshare and the Growth Score. The Mindshare score is a score looking at web signals. It's basically a gauge of public interest. It looks at things like website traffic, social media mentions, and mobile downloads. Then the Grill score takes into account the uh, same data points from the Mindshare, and it also includes funding growth and employee growth. Of the two scores, I gen generally will look at Grill score to uh, really kind of surface the types of companies that I think are worth talking with. So what you want to do next is you want to go to Edit Columns. This is where you're going to be able to select the data that you want to look at as you start to find the companies that are going to be more likely to spend money with you. So I'm going to go through and check and uncheck a few different data points so that I have a view that is really interesting to me to help discover these companies that I want to build to my list. So I'm going to check off a bunch of employee growth data. Employee growth is a very good proxy for a lot of salespeople. Uh, so we have a lot of data on monthly unique traffic, uh, website, uh, mobile downloads, all sorts of funding information, which I already have a bunch of these checked off for me because I definitely want to filter by that. Location data, business models, industries, and keywords are a few that I like to look at. So. Now I'm looking at about 30,000 companies, so I want to definitely drill this down to a list that uh, I can definitely work with. So I want to start off by going to employee count. Personally, I like to look at companies with at least 100 employees, and so everyone is going to be different. For this example, we'll just put a minimum of 100. And you can also put in a maximum, as you can see. And then I could even sort this by looking at the biggest companies first. So I would just hit, hit descending order. And that way, I'm looking at the biggest companies uh, on down. Next, uh, I want to go to funding. I want to see any company that has raised money within the last 12 months. So I'm going to go to last funding. And you'll see we have a bunch of presets in here, as well as I could pick a range if I wanted to. I'm going to select raised in the past year. So now I'm looking at any company that is raised in the past year. So of course that gets rid of our public companies, but this is folks that have received money recently. So therefore me as a sales rep, if I'm selling software, it means they're more likely to have a budget, money to spend right now. Another data point that I find interesting is employee growth. So I want to get rid of any company that has not raised money, or excuse me, that has uh, not added employees over the last six months. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put a minimum growth of 1%. Now we're looking at any company that has raised money in the, 12, in the last 12 months and has added employees within the last six months. So now we're looking at about 209 companies. Last thing I want to do is I want to filter this list by removing any of my current customers. The way that I do this is I go over here to Advanced. And this is where you'll see the Boolean search uh, capabilities in Mattermark. You'll see all the filters that we've added so far. Now I want to add one more. I'm going to hit and, and I'm going to go to custom list, not in list, Mattermark customers. So previously I added our customers in here as a separate list 
if I can type. And now I'm going to remove those companies from this set of 209. So now that will get me to about 200 from the, the current customer or the current prospect list that we've built already. So then what you would do is you would save this list. It's kind of one of the last steps. So you're going to go to this blue button, hit save, name this whatever you want. And what this is going to do is it's going to subscribe you to news alerts. So if, there's an, if these companies are in the news, you're going to get notified via email. So basically, as a salesperson would call these trigger events, as well as is notifying you when there's new companies that fit this configuration. So in this example, when there's a new company in the Bay Area with at least 100 employees that has received funding and that has shown positive employee growth over the last six months, that's not already a current customer, you're going to get emailed. So... This list has 200 companies today. If there's 201 tomorrow, you'll know who that new company is, which is, is pretty nice. So then you would hit save. I'm going to uncheck these for right now because I already have my own list that I get alerts on. Um, and then lastly, you can export this to CSV. So if I hit on export visible or export all, that will send me an Excel file or that will download an Excel file of all these customers. So then I can then import it to my CRM or um, keep it in a separate file outside of Mattermark. So the last thing I'll show you is how we actually did that uh, filtering by my current customers. It's actually pretty simple to do. The way that you do that is you go to Lists, Custom Lists, and this is where you can import your customers or import any list for that matter into Mattermark. And, it, and the way that you do that is you go to Create New List, and then you simply copy and paste the URLs of the uh, customers that you do not want to have in your um, net new list that you're building. So for example, if I didn't want Uber, I would just simply type in their URL and type in as many as I want there or paste it from an Excel document. Then you would just simply hit create list. It's that simple. So that's how you build a, a lead list. Uh, there's, of course, many different ways to do it. That's just how I personally do it. But I want to show you how easy that is. And uh, be sure to watch our other videos. And uh, happy hunting.